So, assalamu alaikum, peace be upon everybody. Um, I'm just checking out here, trying to figure out how Schacht does his uh, citations because, you know, it's not according to current standards that we're really uh, used to nowadays. Um, you know, the like Chicago style or MLA or APA citation methods is not really what's uh, being used here. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out kind of where Yosef Schacht is coming from. And, you know, as you remember with the reading so far, he keeps mentioning, mentioning Treatise 1, Treatise 2. So in his section, Bibliography and List of Abbreviations, he goes over what this is. I wish he would just put in the footnotes the full title of the book, you know, every time or whatnot. Um, I'm not sure if this was some sort of physical limitation due to, you know, writing this with a typewriter or the physical print type that they had back then, you know, the printing press. Um, I'm not sure why they decided to do it this way, but it's, it's really annoying to contemporary academic. But, um, so, treatise number one is Ikhtilaf al-Iraqiyin. Um, then we have treatise two is Ikhtilaf Ali wa Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So, it's a, this is from Kitab al-Um. That's from Kitab al-Um as well. Ikhtilaf Malik wa Shafi'i is treatise number three. And then Kitab Jama'a. Okay, that must. So all these it says Ibid here, so that must all, all be referring to Kitab al Um. And uh, so he has Roman numerals that he also is using for the volume numbers too, which I've seen in his in text citations. And then treatise number five, Bayan Fara'idullah. Treatise number six, Kitab Sifat Nahi Rasulullah. Treatise number seven, Kitab Ibtal al Istihsan. So he has a whole treatise railing on Istihsan, which he's uh, famous for. Then there's treatise number eight, Kitab Rod ala Muhammad bin al Hassan. So he's there, he's refuting a Shaybani. And um, then, of course, Kitab al Um, using the Bulaq edition there. Um, and then, of course, you know, he's got like Al Jam'a Al Sagir, um, Kitab Siyar Kabir, but you know, noticeably, um, Kitab Al Asl is missing, which I've, I've mentioned before. You know, he's got Tabri here, Ikhtilaf Al Fuqaha, of course, the edition, you know, from Leiden. Um, so it's kind of interesting, you know, the stuff that he had access to. Sharh Ma'ani Al Athar from uh, Imam Al Tahawi, Tahadib from Ibn Hajj Al Asqalani. So, you know, he's got some interesting stuff. And one of the things that I noticed too is he, he sometimes just cite mud, mud, but it's actually Al Mudawana. I was thinking in my head probably it's Al Mudawana, but now here I can have it, you know explicitly laid out so really this the, these type of abbreviations I, I don't know why they weren't put in the beginning of the book that's kind of the convention nowadays it's to have it really hidden back in the bibliography is quite strange to me but hey that's what we're dealing with so here we are Ibn Hazm al-Ahkam okay his usul book and um, Fikr Akbar so so here he's got uh, the Muwatta, that stands for Muwatta, then the Muwatta of Shebani and Mudawana. <laughs> and he says, I often found it convenient to give only the first page of the whole section in which the reference is to be found. So his citation is like, uh, you know, I mean, could be better. Um, but of course, like I said, I don't know what limitations they were dealing with back then. 
presumably he's writing this book in the 1940s. So God knows uh, really what they were going through with the academics during that time. We're talking about, you know, World War II decade, right? Um, but anyways, uh, that's pretty much about it. That's mostly what I wanted to, uh, you know, talk about here in regards to um, how he kind of is citing stuff. That's a great book right there, Bachelman, by the way. Gesichter der Arabischen Literatur. That's a, that's a good one. Even today, that book is so useful. But yeah, anyways, I just wanted to kind of show you, you know, so we can have some reference here as to what these different uh, treatises are. Um, and then uh, we'll get back to reading um, in the next video here. But I just want to make sure that we're on the same page as to what, um, you know, sources that he's using, what he means when he says the different treatise numbers, and uh, so on and so forth. And please uh, remember to subscribe, you know, give the video a like if you're into this stuff, and uh, check out my Patreon. Um, I'm going to be making some special videos for the Patreon-only members here soon as well. Um, and if you notice, uh, I'm starting to wear some European berets, and I plan to make a video about the history of the beret and how it comes from the Moroccan, uh, like Tarbouche or Fez or, you know, whatever you want to call it, Ta'iya, Kufi. Um, but, you know, the North African cap is a little bit more stiff in the sides and the beret just simply is not stiff. And um, But I believe it came to the European world through Islamic Spain and became popular, especially in the, the, the Basque people in northern Spain, southern France, and kind of just became popular throughout Europe in the 1800s. And in, in recent memory, quite popular uh, in the 60s and 70s with revolutionary movements and leftist thought. So I also kind of want to put that little tidbit in there. Watch out for that. I uh, am doing research right now on the history of berets and how it's tied to Islamic history. And that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoy this video and uh, have a great rest of your day or night.